Hey there, puppy. Come here, coyote. Come here, coyote. Come here, coyote. Atta boy. Come on. Come on, buddy. What's going on guys? My name is Noah and this is Broken Arrow Bison. Recently I had the pleasure of judging the Missouri Spring uh, Bison Association sale. And um, some of you guys have asked me, what makes a good buffalo a good buffalo? To, to kind of really sum things up, it's really subjective, honestly. Um, there are some key features that we really look for. Um, I haven't been in this, uh, long enough to be able to be an expert on this by any means so there are some of you guys watching that have raised buffalo or bison for a long time and you could give me a lot of pointers but um, some of the things that we really look for I have learned from other producers uh, my mentor in raising bison has been a gentleman by the name of Peter Cole and he has taught me a lot of what I know and what to look for in a good quality animal. So some of the things we're looking for 
when we're purchasing buffalo or judging buffalo is the length of the animal, um, the thickness, the um, structure of their hips, the back line, their coat, um, how shiny their coat is. And so, some of those things we talk about, like uh, their coat, for instance. The, how shiny their coat is, if you can look right here in the middle, uh, number 78, she is uh, our dark animal. Her coat is really, really shiny. And one of the reasons for that is because she's a healthy animal. The coat of the animal is a really good way of telling what the health is of the animal. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't tell you everything by any means, but it is a really good, uh, in a general sense, way of telling if the animal is in Gen in good health or not. When I had my last herd, I had uh, 15 animals and I had some pro problems with the uh, parasites attacking them. And I didn't really know too much about that. I didn't, didn't know that the, uh, the, the coat and the sheen of their coat can tell you di different things. Well, all, uh, all of my animals started looking really kind of ratty. Um, the fur started slowly falling out, um, starting looking kind of mangy. And that's one of the telltale signs that their immune system is having trouble uh, warding off whatever it is they're fighting. So that's one of the things that we look for. Uh, something that Peter Cole explained to me when I first got started into buffalo was a good confirmation buffalo. You want to look for um, a, a large shoulder, smaller mid midsection, and then smaller rear end. Uh, one way he, he put it to me and always stuck to, to me in my head was, you know, the buffalo on the buffalo nickel. Um, if you look at that picture, he has a real large hump, but then his hind end is, is really, really small. Um, when we're looking for quality animals, what we're kind of looking for is more of a graduation from the hump to the hind end. The way Peter explained it to me, I thought was really good, was you want to look for about three circles. So the hump is going to be one circle, large circle, and then the midsection is going to be a smaller circle, and then the hind end is going to be a little bit smaller than that. If you draw a line through those three circles, you get a really nice back line. And that's another thing that we look for in these bison is we want a really nice, uh, smooth, sloping back line. Really kind of just as straight as possible from that hump all the way to the hind end. That gives a really good confirmation bison. So some of the other things we'll look for is uh, clarity of vision. Um, you wanna see if uh, their eyes are glazing over or not. Um, some of those things can be signs of pink eye or uh, going blind. So we really kind of want to look at that. Uh, the horns are one thing that we look at too. Um, if you have horns that are curving in at a, a different rate than others, it could be signs of uh, the buffalo having some problems with their immune system. Uh, when I had my animals that had those worm problems, um, there was their, their horn growth was curving in a little too fast uh, than normal. If you see like 78 right here, she's a black feather. Her horn growth, she's a calf, her horn growth is going straight out. That's really good for her. Um, it's just a really good sign of a quality animal that, that the, the growth rate of the horn is progressing accurately. Sometimes when they have some problems with their immune system and they're fighting something off, their horns will want to kind of curl in a little bit faster than they should. So that's one of the things we look for also. Uh, some of the other things we look for um, when you're buying an animal is uh, their feet. Are they in good condition? Are they, uh, um, is there, are, are they bloody? Have they, um, do they have 
signs of, of what would be called foot rot or different things like that. But in a general sense, a good quality buffalo, just to kind of sum it up in, in a couple different key frames, are a back line that slopes directly down, a thick back end, a good clean solid coat, a long animal, and a tall animal. Um, coloring is really kind of subjective. I am partial to the dark animals. I really like the dark black uh, animals. Number 78, black feather. She is probably one of my favorite cows. She's just a really beautiful animal. She's got that black mane, almost looks kind of like a hyena. She's really, really cool. But uh, the blonde um, bison or buffalo are really cool too. It's just, uh, it's, it's kind of like one of, one of those uh, things is it's really hard to make that decision. I moved this uh, feed trough over here and uh, just trying to switch some things up, trying to uh, get them used to feeding from different areas of the field. Eventually I'll be able to uh, throw out on the ground some range cubes and they'll be able to pick that up. Right now I'm trying to train them to that. I got the range cubes mixed in with the sweet feed. One of the things I'm trying to do right now with these guys, um, I love just feeding them and, and watching them up close. But one of the things I am trying to do is interact with them a little bit um, while they're eating like this. So like me sitting here talking right next to them, that uh, gets them used to me. Um, if you, if I were to cross this fence, I've got this fence off right now, but if I, if I were to cross this fence and stand right here, that would actually make them a little bit more uneasy, I noticed, and they'll move off. Um, I don't want them that comfortable with me. With buffalo, you don't, you don't want them that comfortable with you that they're, um, I guess, seeing you as a peer. They want, you want them to see you as something else other than a peer because um, what they do with their peers is not what you want them to do to you. Uh, they'll, they'll hit each other and they'll, they'll play and not necessarily being mean or anything like that, but um, you, you can't really handle what these uh, animals can put out. Um, these, these girls, they're only about 400 pounds or a little over now, um, but I'll tell you what, the strength that they have is, is crazy um, they have been known the bulls have been known to bend whole jeep frames before uh, a friend of mine has a corral and i went out and looked at it and there was a pipe that just est and i looked at it and i i asked him why the pipe est in his corral and he said that two bulls hit that pipe from either end and missed each other and just s to that pipe. I mean, just the, the, the sheer power they have is unprecedented and uh, you don't want to get in the way of that by any means. So you do want them to have some respect of you. You want to be able to respect them, but I want to be able to work with them also. Um, so there's kind of a, there's a balance. Um, you want them to be friendly enough to work with, but you don't want them to be too friendly that they'll push you around and, and uh, treat you as one of their peers. If you go over and look at a friend of mine, uh, Cross Timbers Bison, Dusty Baker over there, he's got a 2,000 pound plus bull that is just huge. And he just put out a video not too long ago of that 2,000 pound bull just running around like he's a dog. And they can do that. Like it, the agility of these animals is crazy. They will, uh, they'll take and go from zero to 30 or 40 mile an hour in an instant. They're so docile and everybody sees them in Yellowstone um, and they just look like a big fluffy cow. And so they try to get these photo ops with them and, and pictures and try to go up and pet them. Um, and not realize that they are very agile and very quick and they are a wild animal still. My wife bought me a sticker that I love that says don't pet the fluffy cows and it's got a picture of a bison on it. I love that. It's really kind of a uh, kind of a sum, sums up what the, these animals are. 
as you can see guys these animals are doing really well the uh, bull and the two girls from Peter are coming to feed really well and these guys are starting to warm up too um, we are enjoying raising these animals and we're really glad to have you guys along with this journey we've been doing some fun stuff lately and going live on Saturday mornings um, and we might change the time frame up a little bit we'll see but if you hit that bell icon when you subscribe to our channel or if you want to go back and hit that bell icon that will let you know whenever we go live and we've just been doing like a live feed once a week or so with these bison and I can answer some of you guys' questions. It's a lot easier to answer some of these questions live. Um, some of the uh, comments you guys have left, I try to keep up on them as best I can, but I kind of get lost with some of them. I've noticed I've missed some of those. So be sure to turn, tune in live and I will be able to answer as many questions as I can with these animals and give you some, some up close footage of the great American bison. Thank you for joining us and have a great rest of your week.